We have got these enormous resources, not only natural resources, but resources of people. Intelligent, capable, loyal. And we have to do something about these things. And so the policies and programs which my government is pursuing unapologetically are designed to ensure that we do something about Guyana so that all of us can lift our heads and be proud to stand up in any public forum and say, I am a Guyanese citizen. Thank you for spared lives. We thank you for allowing us to be citizens of this blessed country, which is both beautiful and bountiful. We thank we come before you to celebrate the life and stewardship of the late President Hugh Desmond. We thank you for his efforts to grow the economy and to relieve the poor. We thank you for his efforts to help every guy needs to maximize his or her potential. We thank you for the leadership you provide to both party and country. We ask that you give him strength to emulate the good deeds that he has done and to walk in his footsteps. While we ask that you grant unto him eternal rest. In Jesus' name, Amen. May the late President be as a right to be with the rest. Karpur Gauram, Karunavataram, Sansarasaram, Ujagindraharam, Sadavasantam, Hirayaya Binde, Bhavam Bhavani Sahitam Naman Bhavam Bhavani Sahitam Naman Hari Om Shanti 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 Hari Om أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إذن الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المكتوب عليهم ولا الضالين all praises is due to God of God. Master, the day of judgment, you alone be worship, you alone be praise, you alone be acts of help. Guide us on the straight path, not on the path of those who do wrong or those who go astray. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Oh, sorry, the National Church. We now have the National Church. Okay, I pledge myself and I always thank God. And to give God to my country. To give it to the last man. To love my first. And to dedicate my energy to the world's happiness and prosperity. Thank you. Please be seated. Leader of the People's National Congress Reform and Leader of the Opposition, Comrade Aubrey Compton Merton, Vice Chairpersons, members of the Central Executive Committee, former party leader, Comrade Robert Corbett, former 
general sense of the law, formal treasurer, Comrade Belkin, members of parliament, party elder, family and friends of Comrade Yu Desmond White, Comrade all. Good morning and welcome to this memorial service for Comrade Yu Desmond Hoy. Even as we mourn the loss of Comrade Hoy, we nevertheless celebrate the life, work, and accomplishment of this son of the soil. Comrade Hoy was a patriotic animal who loved this country. He was the second executive president of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana and the second leader of our great party, the People's National Congress Reform. His life and work was one of service to the country and all and And so today we are gathered here to celebrate his legacy and the positive contributions he would have made to our party, our people, and our country. We now have national song, my native land, I'll invite Comrade Oscar Clark to grace us with his melodious voice, as usual. Can we all stand? First of all, 
dispense with a pleasant duty of wishing you a happy Christmas and a prosperous new year. We have come through a difficult year, yet the party has survived. Difficulties have been overcome, and lessons have been learned. A special thanks to those who have worked on all the other comrades to ensure the unity and survival of their party. I have spoken to you before of the lessons which, can, which we can learn from the political life of leadership and the presidents of the leaders in point. We have referred to the skill of which it has brought us through the very difficult period for the party and the nation. We have pointed to his ability to focus on the strategic objectives of the party and the nation and to ignore the unnecessary carping and criticisms from those who put their personal concerns before the interests of the party and nation. He also taught us that we can use the period of our life to be innovative and constructive. The economic recovery program, the Guyana Prize, and the creation of a constructive and effective foreign policy are achievements of Mr. Hugh Desmond White as leader and president. It is the latter achievement I would like to talk to you about this morning. Most of you, if not all of you, who are present here this morning are aware of the recent threat that Venezuela has posed to the existence of our country. It was an unprecedented threat. It was not as in the period of the 1970s and 80s, and even the 90s when they blew up pontoons who flew Guyana's territory harassed our miners and rage a propaganda campaign against our country. It was rather a bold attempt to annex the SPD. Let us recount the facts. Just after the government of Guyana announced the action of 14 new oil plants, Venezuela went into a frenzy of activity. First, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in September 1922 condemned this action this was followed by a community coming out of President Maduro's office saying that what the government of Guyana was doing was illegal. The Venezuelan National Assembly joined in the act and announced that there will be a consultative referendum that, I quote, allowed the Venezuelan people to express their views on a significant territorial controversy, Venezuela's claim over their security territories, unquote. As we all know, the referendum was held, and even though it was not well supported by the people of Venezuela, President Maduro announced that he was proceeding with the annexation of Escobedo. There was every sign that this time around, Venezuela would invade Guyana, as it did in 1966, and took over the eastern of Ancoco Island. It was at that point that the Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Dominicans, Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, and many leaders of the Caribbean and Latin American countries, including President Lula of Brazil, intervened and brought about a recently held meeting in St. Vincent. The results of the meeting are a matter of public record. While I can see that it succeeded in reducing tension in the region, I, have, I still have difficulties with which the map, with the manner in which the government of Guyana proceeded with the preparations for the meeting. And it is here we can establish the differences and approaches to diplomacy by the PPP and the PNC, even though we share a common objective of protecting our territorial integrity and sovereignty. When Mr. Hoyt acceded to the presidency in 1985, the territorial integrity of this country was very much threatened, as it was in recent times, albeit without the noisy civil rappings of the Maduro regime. In proceeding to deal with our relations with Venezuela and the specific issue 
of the territorial controversy. Mr. Hoyt initiated a process of preparation which was both profound and all embracing. I know with some certainty that great care was exercised to ensure that Ghana's interests were protected. When Desmond Hoyt went to his meetings with President Perez, Rosinchi, and Caldero, in particular, Mr. Hyde went to those meetings with an understanding and knowledge of an agenda of those meetings, as well as the draft community for consideration. That should have been the case at the St. Vincent meeting. As a leader of the opposition, as I've already indicated, I would have elected to send a representative to St. Vincent meeting if, it was, if I was persuaded that adequate preparation had been made for it and that the president had knowledge of its agenda. As it was, it seems that the agenda for the meeting in St. Vincent was hashed out during the course of actual negotiations. Moreover, it was Mr. Hyde's practice to share with the Guyanese people the results of the meeting we had with Venezuelans so they could have a good idea about what took place and how the interest of Ghana was being promoted protected and preserved. Another difference between the PPP and the PNC, our party always ensured that there was a strong Ministry of Foreign Affairs headed by a brilliant man. This is so because the PNC is our first line of defense. This is true under Mr. Forbes Burnham as it was under Mr. Peters in Hall. One of the more remarkable things about Venezuela recent aggression against Ghana was the Ministry of Foreign Affairs had no voice in the matter. This is unacceptable. And we have made proposals that the Ministry of Foreign Affairs should be strengthened so that they can play a greater role in the foreign policy of the nation with specific regard to the Ghana Venezuela territory and It would be remiss of me if I don't bring another important point of fact to you. There are those who in modern times operate as if they were the initiation, initiators of actions on the environment. I want to remind all of us that the 1980 Constitution was the first to speak specifically to the environment. Then I want to make the point that it is you, Desmond Hoyt, who offered the Commonwealth land as a laboratory to look into our forest. When it started, it was called the Guyana Commonwealth Green Forest Project. The offer was made in 1989 in Kuala Lumpur at the Commonwealth Heads of Government Conference. After that, a multi-agency group was set up that began to pursue the implementation of the Guyana Commonwealth Rainforest Program. In the process of preparation, there was an indigenous guide who guided the team into that area. And it is at that point it was known that the area that was chosen was called Iwakaran. And the Ghana Rainforest Commonwealth Project became Iwakaran. And so I say this to say to you, one of the initiators of dealing with issues in the environment in Ghana has been and so I believe we can depart from hearing the full knowledge that one of the legacies of Mr. Hoyt as leader of this party is his commitment to national development of the nation, the environment, and the preservation of its territorial integrity and suffering of man. And so today, as we commemorate his life, we should feel proud that he served us as leader, he served us as president, and his contribution to the development of Guyana is indelibly etched 
in the history and memory of the people of Ghana. There is so much in peace. Thank you, Comrade Lydia. We will now move to the we now move to the main of the treaty. So we will be working this area. Ms. Jerome Bob, representing Ms. Gloria Hunt, sister of the late Judas Menahite. Ms. Gloria Hunt is not well today, and so Ms. Jerome Bob will be representing her. Leader of the party, Comrade Abu Nelson. Former Treasurer, Comrade Rano Falcon. Former party leader representing the Judas White Foundation, Comrade Robert Corbin, Curiosus Comrade Corbin, Elizabeth Williams Nile, Vice Chairman of the PNCR. Comrade Timothy Carr, representing the National Congress of Women. Presenting the Guyana Youth and Student Movement. And at Paul Clark, representing the Chairman of Christ and Twinsia District. Thank 
Samus Salmon is worship Mia of Lumen. And then Sharon Benjamin representing his worship near Yuan Sadao. And then here's a pile representing region number four. Kylie Kamal, Dan Hastings, General Secretary of the PNCR. Oh yes, I wanna invite as well. We can have two persons on the clock. Okay. I thought we would have had a duet. A duet would be good.
Thank you for coming, God. Thank you for coming. Come on. I would like to now invite Comrade Don Hastings Williams, MP, to express appreciation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Chairman of the PNCR, and Chairman for this morning session. Comrade Leader of the C. Norton, former leader Sir Robert Corbyn, members of Parliament, members of the Central Executive Committee, members of the PNCR, friends of the PNCR, special invitees. A very good morning to all of you. This morning is my simple task to give the words of appreciation and of course saying thank you is always one of the magical words. So I want to thank every one of you this morning for taking time off your busy schedule because I know it's preparation time for the special holiday. But thank you for coming here to, and I appreciate your presence. I must make special mention of Comrade Leader for his, re for his remarks. And uh, it is always good to remember our former leaders because they did great work for this country. And so thank you, thank you, thank you. And may Comrade you, Desmond Hoyt, so continue to rest in peace. Thank you, Comrade General Secretary. Can we all stand as we close the program with the last stanza of the National Anthem? Thoughts on the late you, Desmond Hyde. Um, Mr. Hyde must have been a very important person in your political career as well. Give us your thoughts. Well, as was stated this morning by our party leader, he has made an indelible contribution which none of his detractors can de deny in terms of the contribution to the environment and uh, in terms of his work towards preservation of Ghana's territorial integrity. But I would say that his significant contribution was the transformation of the economy, which was at, uh, in a very uh, precarious state when he took office after the death of the founder leader. And he, with the economic recovery program, transformed Guyana's economy so that when he left office, Guyana was well in the road to economic recovery, making several phenomenal marks in its economic recovery. You might have been following the border controversy with um, Venezuela. I mean,
between the former leader, Comet LFS Valentine, you might have played a pivotal role in terms of, you know, diplomatic diplomacy and all of that taking place. What are your thoughts now that the claim has now come back to haunt us? Well, yes, I was very much involved. Um, I was very much involved when Carl Sanders Perez, then president of Venezuela, came to Guyana and had face-to-face uh, -face conversations with uh, Paul Burnham. But even Carl Sanders Perez, who was uh, still acclaimed as one of the most popular presidents of Venezuela, uh, was put in a position where he was talking about the Aberdeen line. Hmm. So that nothing has changed except that Maduro has gone back to the position where he's trying to take the whole of uh, the Esquibo. So I would say yes, um, today we've seen Maduro going way beyond his predecessor because what Chavez did was to avoid the issue as much as possible. Whereas Maduro is trying to shore up his own popularity at home and he's using the border issue as a means of doing so. And you believe that the court, the, the court, um, the International Court of Justice should be the final Yes, the final the fact that he should not have even been involved. I believe the UN should have settled this matter a long time ago because it's an award and um, Venezuela was part of it. They were part of the Boundary Commission. Uh, so was Brazil, and therefore there is no question as to whether they accepted it. But as I said before, they're using it for internal political maneuvering. As Thank Maduro is now. Thank you, sir. MP Lewis, your thoughts on Mr. U. Desmond Height as former leader of the party, um, the man who initiated the economic recovery program. Your thoughts? You know. I believe that that was the greatest program of all times that we have had in Guyana at a time when it was needed most. Now that we have found oil, we are, we are experiencing poverty at another level. Mm -hmm. And I believe that it is time for us to assess where we are as a country receiving revenues from oil. But still, we are poorer as a nation. The economic recovery program is an excellent precedent for us to look at and for us to just take a few things from there, a few lessons learned, because it was an excellent program that brought our economy back to where we needed our people to survive. Mm. We are at a survival mode in this country at this time. And we honestly could do with a lot more that we've learned from, from Desmond Hoyt and his policy to bring back our economy, to feed our people. We are an all rich nation and our people are starving in some communities. We absolutely need a program, a policy program, because this government has no national policy for us to come back from the level of poverty we are in at this time. Thank you, MP. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Bulkan, again, we are the 21st death anniversary of Mr. U. Desmond Hoyt. A lot of memories I know you might have had about this great man, U. Desmond Hyde. What are your thoughts today as we celebrate the 21st death anniversary um, of this great leader? Uh, truthfully speaking, uh, Andrew, uh, I do not have that many personal memories of uh, Mr. Hoyt. One, however, that stands out was when uh, sometime in the late 1980s, he visited our factory. Uh, actually, I think it might have been on the eve of the 1992 elections. Uh, he was campaigning to, for re-election. He came, he addressed the workers uh, as well as the management and there was no political message uh, that he shared that day. Uh, what I recall Mr. Hyde said 
uh, to the workers there was he implored them to work hard and uh, to work for the success of the company, uh, which, uh, in his opinion, was the best way that uh, their livelihoods could be secure and uh, the con their conditions of employment improved. And uh, it struck me that day that Mr. Hoyt was, uh, you know, we had expected perhaps uh, some political pitch mm -hmm. and to, you know, ask for consideration to be given to supporting uh, him to be re-elected. There was nothing of the sort. Uh, I think it spoke a lot to his character and to his makeup. And, uh, Certainly not for those reasons, but for his contributions to our country, not only as leader of the People's National Congress, but as president of the Cooperative Republic, for the uh, struggles, sacrifices, uh, services, and stewardship that he provided to this nation, that it is indeed a pleasure for me to be here this morning to pay my tribute to his memory and to his legacy. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Vice Chair, Mr. Um, Vince Roy Jordan, I know that this morning is a, was a touching moment for you in terms of reflecting on this great man, Mr. Hugh Desmond Hoyt, former president of Ghana and former party leader. Your thoughts on the program today? Well, I think um, as is usual every year we come here to celebrate and um, commemorate the life of our uh, second executive president of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana, Mr. Hugh Desmond Hoyt, and more so um, one of our um, leaders of the party, second leader uh, of the People's National Congress Reform. I, um, from time to time, continue to speak of him as that visionary leader, that champion uh, of the environment and that champion of the economic recovery program who led Guyana to that economic prosperity as we would put it then from 1988 to 1992 and so we see him as a leader or I see him personally as a leader who would have given to Guyana uh, in ex exception of, 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 of what many other leaders would have given in his own way and so I recognize him for that leadership um, in climate, in environment and in um, the economic recovery program. Thank you sir. All right, I have with me come with Marvin Williams and uh, Mr. Retti Meyer, um, two members of the party, Central Executive Committee members as well. Um, Mr. Retti Meyer, your thoughts first on Mr. Hugh Desmond Hoyt. Well, I think Mr. Hoyt was a leader who was particularly concerned about the integration of the Caribbean because I can remember in the 1980s, I think it was 87, um, or 88 when Gilbert, Hurricane Gilbert struck Jamaica. Mr. Hoyt sent me as an individual, first of all, to do reconnaissance of the situation in Jamaica. And after I came back and made a report and wrote a report, he decided to send a detachment of soldiers to assist the Jamaican government to restore power and water and a number of other things on the island. And I think he really took on that task First of all, to demonstrate that in spite of the fact that we didn't have much in terms of finance, that we were going to do what we could according to our capacity. And uh, in fact, Guyana really led that delegation into Jamaica and did a number of things for which at that time, and I suppose up to now, the Jamaicans are quite appreciative. Thank you, sir. Mr. Marvin? Hugh Desmond Hoyt came to power in this country under very difficult circumstances. We had just lost Guyana's first executive president and found the leader of the People's National Congress. And it was a difficult time because the world was changing. Mr. Hoyt was not afraid of change. He embraced change. He was an agent of change. Mr. Hoyt transformed this country at a time when that transformation was necessary and timely. He embarked upon a number of programs to help the economy to remain buoyant. He implemented a number of measures, a number of policies that ensure that the working poor 
was not abandoned, that they were supported. Uh, there was the social impact amelioration program, there was the, the, um, the economic recovery program which it supported. You're a crammer? And there were a number of economic measures that Mr. Height implemented which resulted in, by 1992 when he demitted office, the IMF report put Guyana on a growth path somewhere in the region of 9.6%, which successive governments have inherited and benefited from. Mm. Mr. Hoyt embraced the environment, embraced the need for um, conservation measures, and committed the pristine forest in the middle of the Essequibo, Guyana's sovereign territory, may I add, to biological um, study and research, the Iwakrama project was born and that was the brainchild of Hugh Desmond Hoyt. He was a pioneer in that regard. He set the benchmark really high for conservation efforts across the world. And Guyana, um, I believe, was the first country to contribute physical geographic space for the purpose of the study of biological diversity. Thank Mr. You. Hoyt stood head and shoulders over contemporary leaders of his time. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We have got these enormous resources, not only natural resources, but resources of people, intelligent, capable people, loyal people. And we have to do something about these things. And so the policies and programs which my government is pursuing unapologetically are designed to ensure that we do something about Guyana so that all of us can lift our heads and be proud to stand up in any public forum and say, I am a Guyanese citizen.